Thank you, Phyllis, for reading this very clear passage from the Bible. Now, all of you know exactly why Jesus spoke in parables, and we can just sing another hymn and go home. Does that sound like a good plan, the choir? Well, so uh, my name is Jenny. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are in the worship series um, called Googling Jesus. Uh, so Pastor Lance picked up the most common searches that people type up in Google about Jesus. And one of them was, why did Jesus speak in parables? Well, when I was preparing this message, the first thing I did is I Googled the answer <laughs> because that's what I do. I Google all kinds of stuff. It's one of my most favorite apps on my phone. Well, I Googled the answer, and as a normal person, I picked up the website that was suggested to me by the almighty Google. I'm pretty sure it was sponsored. It was, I don't know, ministry something something.org. And some kind of a faithful Christian set their task to explain why Jesus spoke in parables, and they used exactly this scripture. Easy, right? So I'm reading their answer because I think, well, that'll be an easy sermon preparation. Here we go. <laughs> and you know what? I don't like the answer. The answer was Jesus spoke in parables, as you can see from Matthew 13, to conceal the truth from some people. That's the summary of about a three-page article that I read. Jesus spoke to people to conceal truth from those same people? Does that sound to you like Jesus that you know? Does that look like Jesus that we read about in other stories in the Bible? Does that sound like Jesus that you believe in? A Jesus that would hide something so important from people? It doesn't sound like my Jesus. That's why I didn't like that answer. So I went back to the Scripture again. I reread the Scripture. I mentally said, thank you, Reverend Lance Marshall, for picking up this verse and then taking off to go to vacation for his well-deserved rest and trusting me to figure out this problem. Thank you, Lance. So I figured it out. Plenty of times in the Bible, uh, we come across some passages that are just plain weird. It happens. In biblical studies, we call them obscure passages, as if that doesn't make it sound that they are weird. Anyway, and this is one of them. They are obscure. You read it, and you just have that gut feeling like something's not right. Well, that, that doesn't sound like Jesus. Well, I mean, that's not the Jesus that is walking around, talking to crowds, healing people, feeding people. What kind of a Jesus is this? It's an obscure passage. It's a weird passage. It's not clear. So what do we do with it? What we do with it is we look at the entire Scripture, and we take that Scripture, and we ask it to help us figure it out. So I had to close my eyes and imagine, try to imagine this scene where Jesus would say those words. For those who will receive more and they will have more enough, but as those who don't have, even little that they have will be taken away from them. That sounds threatening. That sounds alienating. That sounds isolating. So as I reread and reread those words, I played with the tone that Jesus would say those words. Was he speaking just as a matter of fact, yes, it's happening. There's nothing I can do about it. Some people get it, some people don't. By the way, good luck to all of you here gathered around me because you got it. You are the insiders. You understand. Everybody else, nah, they don't get it. Is that how Jesus said those words? And I said, no, mm -mm, doesn't sound like my Jesus. That's not how my Jesus talk. So I played more and more with my imagination. And the way I came up to read this text now is that Jesus speaks and he's so sad, he's brokenhearted. That doesn't matter how he approaches the crowds, how he explains what it is like to be part of the kingdom of God, still some people cannot quite receive it. And it saddens him and it breaks his heart. So when I chose that tone and I reread those words, I'm like, I can see that, Jesus. 
I can see Jesus who looks at the crowds and realizes that at this moment, right there when he talks to them, they still cannot quite grasp it. But also, that same Jesus uses the parables and the stories and the images so that they would stick to people's heads and they will remember them. And at some point, the light bulb will come up. At some point, they will experience God's grace, God's love. They will see something in their life and they'll be like, oh, now I get it. So I think that when Jesus was saying those words, there was also hope there. What are parables? I mean, they are not that complicated to understand. They're not that, they're not that hard. When Jesus talks to the farmers, what does he talk about? The seeds, the crops, the fields, the trees, the fruit. They get it. They know it. That's their life. That's their everyday life. That's their routine. That's all they think about. They know exactly what it is like to put a seed in and see and hope. Is it going to come up? Did it come up? Okay, now how do we protect this, uh, this little plant? How do we help it grow? That's their life. And Jesus says, you see, you can get it. Kingdom of God is just like that. Then he talks to the fishermen. Well, what do fishermen do? All day and all night long, that's all they think about is fish and nets and water and lake. That's all that's on their mind. And he says, you know what? That's good. Let me explain to you what kingdom of God is like. It's like a fishing net. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 we get it. We get it. That's what the parables were doing. Jesus was using the life experiences of people, not just the words that they understand. He used the life experience for people to really, really get it. Think about some examples today. Some of you know that I uh, had a child. Uh, my daughter was born in March. And uh, as a mom nowadays, when you have a child, you join a Facebook group of other moms whose child was born on that same month. So I am part of a March 2021 Babies Facebook group. It has about 15,000 moms all over the world. And what we talk about is what our babies are going through. And of course, you know, they all are born within the same few weeks. So when my baby was about a week old, you know, their little digestive systems just don't quite work well yet. So I was blessed with this not very happy excuse me, constipated baby. <laughs> and we didn't sleep a whole lot during those days. And I remember one night, to keep myself awake, I'm just scrolling through and, you know, reading, what are other moms going through? Let's see if any one of them is sleeping. Nope, all the 15,000 of them are right there on Facebook because that's what we do, we don't sleep. And then one mom at around 2 a.m. posts a picture of the hedgehog. By the way, it buzzes. You can't hear it, but it buzzes. Post a picture of Hedgehog and says, OK, got this hedgehog today in Target. And guess what? Just put it on the baby's tummy. And in two minutes, the magic happens. <laughs> and then you get a two-hour nap, because the baby's just exhausted as you are. Within minutes, about 500 other moms said, oh, yeah, we have the same hedgehog, and it works. Now, when 500 people are telling an exhausted mom like me at 2 o'clock in the morning that the hedgehog works, trust me, I was on Amazon, sold out. I'm like, OK, that makes me nervous. <laughs> are you telling me all the other 15,000 moms are buying hedgehog right now? Because we're all up. Because all of our babies are having trouble with their systems. So then I'm like, Walmart, sold out. Now I'm panicking. I'm going to Target. You know, I'm going down all of my apps on the phone. Target, there is one on the Target 7th Street. Oh, I'm paying for it. I'm like, take my money right now. I don't even care how much it costs. Take my money. In the morning, we wake up, and I tell my husband, we've got to get to Target to get the hedgehog before somebody else gets it. He slept all night. He didn't know what was happening, <laughs> but he rolled with it. We got the hedgehog, and sure enough, about two minutes of a little tummy massage, and I got a happy baby smile. Now, if Jesus would show up on a Facebook mom's group during that month and say, kingdom of God is like a hedgehog, he wouldn't have to say anything else to me anymore. I would be like, Jesus, I get it. 
That was the best theological lesson you have given me. That's all I need to know. Because I don't just know what hedgehog is. I know what it feels like. I know what it brings to it. I experienced it. That would be the best parable ever. If Jesus was walking today here, he would say, friends, kingdom of God is like a sanctuary where the thermostat is set to 72 degrees. <laughs> and then he wouldn't have to say anything else to us, right? We would just sit there and smile and say, yeah, thank God for the kingdom of God. It feels good. Because I don't just know what the thermostat is. I know what it feels like. It's cold enough to feel comfortable, but not quite to where you need a blanket because that would be 69. So it's a 72 degree. Or, for example, <laughs> Jesus would bump into me, you know, and say, oh, you're from Russia. You in Fort Worth, let me tell you something. Kingdom of God is like a snow day that happens in Texas when the electricity stays on. And I would be like, Jesus, say nothing else. I know the joy. I know what it feels like. I know how my heart feels when you tell me those words. That's what he did with the parables. That's what he told the farmers. He talked to them about the seeds that would grow and turn into big crops. Or the fishermen, he told them that's the net that catches all kinds of fish. And they're like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Jesus. I know. So that's what the parables are like. They are not to create some kind of inside a circle where you are an outsider, you don't get it. No, 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 that's not what Jesus did. He went from one group of people to another group of people to another person, and he didn't just tell them some blank statements, some universal theological truths that would go over our head. No, 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 he spoke to each one of them personally. You guys, I know how to speak to you. I know what you're going through. I know what your life is like. I know what you're experiencing. And let me tell you how the kingdom of God will work for you. And then he would go to another group of people and say, I can speak to you too because I know you personally. I care about every single little thing in your life. I know your your daily routines, I know what you're dealing with, and let me tell you, the kingdom of God is there as well. And this is how you can understand it and relate to it. And then he would bump into somebody else and say, you think what you're going through is not that important? You think I don't get it just because I'm God and you are a peasant or a fisherman or, what, or a mom that is trying to sleep and it just doesn't happen? I know what you're going through. And let me tell you, I have good news for you as well. I can explain to you as well what the kingdom of God is. That's what he did with the parables. So when we go back and look at that Matthew 13 text, yes, it may be a little weird, it may be obscure, but we have the whole New Testament that tells us why Jesus spoke with parables. We know that it was not to conceal the truth. We know that he didn't try to push someone away. We know that he didn't go and pick and choose people from the crowd. I want you to get it, and I will speak to you, and I will share a big secret with you, but don't you dare tell anybody about what I told you. That's not what Jesus did. No, he gathered the crowds. He fed the crowds. He healed everybody who was brought to him. The kingdom of God was shared to everyone. And again, it was not shared as a simple blanket statement. He, would, he didn't speak with some bumper stickers that just lose their meanings. No, no, no. He spoke to people with words that they could feel with their bodies, that they could experience, that they could connect with emotionally, physically, on all of the levels. That's what the parables did. So for us today, if you are one of those people <coughs> like a friend of mine, I asked him the other day, I'm like, how, how do you know that you're part of the kingdom of God? Huh? I'm like, okay, let me rephrase it. Do you believe that you're part of the kingdom of God? Well, I don't know, like I go to church, but I'm not like really good and I don't really volunteer as much and like I pray sometimes, you know, like I'm speaking to a normal person. 
And in the end, he says, I don't know if I'm part of the kingdom of God. I never thought of it that way. And I'm thinking, oh, wouldn't it be great for you to hear from Jesus himself that, yes, you are part of the kingdom of God. I know you. I know you personally. And I want you to understand what kingdom of God is, feel it, engage with it, and live into it. You, normal people, nothing special, nothing particular, like, oh, I'm just a mom. I'm, ju I'm just working. I'm just doing my, my own thing. I'm, I'm, nothing special about me. Jesus looks at you and says, no, 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 no. You are special. You are precious. I know you personally, and I speak to you personally with the language, with the words that you understand. That's what Jesus shows us through parables. That's how he approaches every single one of us. We are precious. We are particular. We are unique. And he can find his way to each and every one of our hearts. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it worth celebrating? Can I hear an amen at an 11 o'clock service? Is that loud? Amen? amen? All right, my job is done. This is why Jesus spoke in parables. So when you read Matthew 13, don't let it bug you. Don't let it isolate you. Don't let it push you away. Don't let it take you down the path of, well, am I one of the people who receive the secrets of the kingdom? Am I one of the people that understands it? Or am I the one that Jesus says, my ears are closed, my eyes are closed, I don't see, I don't get it, there is no hope for me. No, that's not who Jesus is talking to. He's calling every single one of us. Do you have ears? As far as I can see, all of us here have at least one ear, maybe two. Some of them work better than others. That's okay. Jesus speaks to all of them. That's what the microphones are for. You have ears. You have eyes. Look for God in your life. Look for those experiences, for those glimpses of God's grace in your life. Catch the words that God is sending to your life. Hear those specially designed parables that are directed only to you, that bring to you the message that God says, I love you. I am calling you to be part of my kingdom every single day. Keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open. Receive the good news of Jesus Christ and celebrate them. It is possible, just like it was possible for regular fishermen and farmers to hear the good news right there by the lake or in the field. It's possible for us to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, not only in the sanctuary from a Russian lady in a church dress. No, it, we hear the good news of Jesus Christ every single day if we keep our ears open and if we keep our eyes open. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I thank you for reaching out to us, for saving us, for speaking hope and love and peace and joy to our hearts. I thank you for leading us through our day-to-day -day routines. I thank you for being present in our lives and sharing in every single one of our experiences. And as we stand before you today, we open ourselves to your grace and to your love. And we want to be reminded of it every single day. And now, with the certainty of the disciples of Christ, we will all say the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.